Hey everybody, it's Rafi at Zurb, and in this video I'm going to show you around the SAS version of Foundation and just some of the reasons and ways that we use SAS here at Zurb to make our projects even better. So, if we hop into the source folder, right now we're looking at a Zurb stack project, so this is a SAS version. We can see that it comes with an assets folder. So one of the advantages here is that the file structure is already taken care of for you and you can do a lot of cool stuff with this to really keep your project organized. So in the SCSS folder, we, you can see that we can separate out our global styles. So our settings.scss file comes by default, but then we also have a layout file here that we've created custom. Now this is a global type of file, so you're gonna have a lot of global uh, styles in here that we're gonna reuse over and over throughout our website. So that's nice to differentiate it from things like components. So these are component level type of SCSS files. So we created a partial called an alert message so you could see how that's created here. Another advantage of the SAS version is that you can use mixins. So every component in Foundation has a mixin, and so that means I can use it without the default Foundation class names. And sometimes people call those meaningless class names because they're not semantic. So if we were going to use the callout class, maybe that's kind of semantic, but a grid class like small dash six, that's not very semantic. And medium, you know, medium dash four, not very semantic. So you can actually use foundation with the mixin. So something like this, at include callout base, you can actually create a callout in this custom class that we've created alert message. And then of course a uh, nice thing too is that you can use math on anything inside of your um, your CSS here and you can also use variables. So we're storing a global margin in this variable. It's set to 16 pixels by default. Of course you can see where all those settings are here in the settings file. So you can see where all the default variables are stored. So something like the global margin, you can see right here is one rem. So it's equal to 16 pixels in this case. So another thing that you can do is also choose which CSS components and their classes are actually included by default. So you get a file called app.scss. And in here you can see the defaults that are included in Foundation. Now, the nice thing about this is this actually controls the classes that are being compiled. So let's say we're not going to use off canvas and let's say we're not going to use media object in our project. So at the end of our project, we decided we didn't use these components. We'll comment them out like this, save. And now the classes for these components will not actually be compiled. So that's gonna save us some CSS file size, which is nice. On top of that, this actually doesn't disallow you from using the component semantically or as an include in your CSS. So for example, I showed you earlier that I used the callout. So if I actually commented this out, it will not compile any of the callout classes. But if we go back to alert message, I'm still able to use the mixin and it works just as well right here in our SCSS. So that's really nice. It's gonna save us a lot of uh, CSS output by not compiling those classes. And if we scroll back down just a little bit further, we can see some of our custom imports. So imports are for SAS partials, which we've created these files here with the underscore in front of them. These are partial SAS files that will be all compiled down into one single CSS file 
that'll be put into our dist folder. So right here, we're importing our global layout styles right up top. Now, of course, these cascade down, so it's really good to make sure you have these in uh, some kind of order. So global styles usually go at the top. And of course, vendor styles can go at the top as well. Vendor styles are for third party plugins that you might bring in. So you created a vendor folder here. And then we took this uh, CSS and added it in here. So that means that if we override some of those vendor styles in one of our custom components that we import down below, it will actually override the styles properly. So if we were gonna create our own custom import right here, we're going to type in at import quotes, make sure we target the right folder, components, and let's call this main nav. And make sure to close that. So if we save that, and we created the file here in our components folder, we now can put CSS in there and compile that. So the SAS version of Foundation really helps you keep these things organized, and this is a basic intro in how to use some of this.